Bob Stoops is a veteran of World War II and D-Day. At age 96, he is one of only a handful of surviving vets whose ranks are dwindling daily. While Stoops answered his country's call to serve, he also responded to a different call, that of crafting religious emblems. Steve Kiltonic visited Stoops at his home where he spoke about his wartime experience and ministry. When meeting Bob Stoops for the first time, you soon realize this 96 years young World War II veteran has stories to tell. The kind of stories which you read about in the history books or see on the newsreels of the day. Stoops' own story begins in Indianapolis, where he was born April 13, 1923. His parents separated when he was less than a year old. My mother took off and we ended up in Chicago. And, uh, and uh, almost during the Depression years, you know. And thank God for the love that she, uh, she had for me. She, she went all over the, the, uh, the western part of the state and took me along, baggage, and trying to find work. After graduating from grade school, Bob and his mom, Agnes, boarded a Greyhound for Seattle, where his mother found a better job. They stayed that summer before returning to Chicago so Bob could attend prestigious Lane Tech, an all-boys school. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, and after graduating high school, Stoops, like many patriotic men his age, joined the service. My girlfriend, who I married for 65 years, she loved a sailor suit. So right after her prom, I went downtown to Chicago to the Merchandise Mart where they had all these military programs. And I saw this cardboard sailor. And I said, that's for me. So I ended up in the Coast Guard. In the Coast Guard. Isn't that ridiculous? Stoops, a boatswain's mate, went to Baltimore for boot camp, then to Groton, Connecticut, where he learned how to detect German submarines or U-boats. In Brooklyn, Stoops was assigned to a small wooden hull boat called the Cutter. With a crew up to 12, he would spend the next four years on board this craft. It was called an 83-footer, and it had very little combat program. It had a 20-millimeter on it and four depth charges and a mousetrap affection in the front which sprayed off 60-pound bombs. That was it. It really wasn't made for a lot of combat. While docked in Brooklyn, Stoops' crew found out they were bound for England. Thirteen days before leaving, he married his sweetheart, Marilyn. We were in Poole, Dorset, the southern part of England. And then one particular day, we got a letter from General Eisenhower. And every ship got the letter, I imagine. That letter explained they were to embark on the largest military operation in history, codenamed Operation Neptune Overlord. That night at 11.30, we hit the, the English Channel, and we went over to France. But being dark, I thought I might have been the only boat. But as soon as daylight started to creep up, I could walk on all the boats almost. It was unbelievable that we're all going to the beaches. It was June 6, 1944, D-Day. I never left the flying bridge. I just knew something big was going on. And as a teenager, it's probably the first time I talked to God in ages. Because I didn't know what was going to go on. Stoops' boat was assigned to what would be the hardest hit of the five Allied landing zones. Omaha. Omaha, Omaha Beach. Yeah, uh-huh. At Omaha, 10,000 Americans lost their lives during the initial days of fighting. We were on the shoreline and patrolling back and forth about 100 feet off of the sand. And whatever the Navy told us to do, we would do, like rescue some people that were in the water or, or tow ammunition barges that were exploding, you know, just whatever. The cutters of the Coast Guard saved more than 400 men from the English Channel during D-Day alone. This search and rescue operation went on for several months. After Normandy, Stoops' boat was stationed on the shores of Cherbourg, France. On Christmas Eve 1944, he was listening to American music and thinking of his wife and returning home. We had a call that there was a ship torpedoed just outside of the harbor, about a mile outside of the harbor or less. The troop ship was the converted Belgium luxury liner, the Leopoldville. It left England with over 2,000 American soldiers assigned to the 66th Infantry Division. The Leopoldville was just five and a half miles from Cherbourg when it was torpedoed by a German U-boat. Stoops' cutter raced to the position not knowing what to expect. What he witnessed haunts him to this day. They found utter chaos and terror. Thousands of American sailors in the frigid waters of the Atlantic, many severely injured and without life vests or lifeboats. 
when we went out there, it's just so it's unbelievable. Uh, uh, there were other boats out there at the time, small boats, and uh, they had their floodlights on this huge, huge ship that was sinking. And I could hear people screaming and yelling and all that in the, in the dark. And you could just see the bow of that ship. And it was slowly going down, going down, going down. And uh, there was just uh, thousands of, uh, several thousand young men on that ship from America. And they were coming into Cherbourg and never made it. And uh, a lot of them were in the water trying to survive. Yeah. Yeah. And your job was to rescue them, get them out of there. Yeah. Stoops remembers what he calls the spirit of humanity, where every sailor thought of his fellow soldier first, despite facing imminent death. 783 Americans were lost that night. 493 were never recovered from the 48-degree water. For the duration of the war, Stoops' boat patrolled the coast and the River Seine until May 1945, when they prepared to return to the United States. Stoops recalled praying at certain times during the war. I did, I did, and it was so unusual for me because at that age I didn't know how much I needed God, you know. What role did faith play during the war for you? Was it something? Well, it must have played a huge role. I come home unharmed, close to shells and everything, but it had to play a huge role. It doesn't say much for the poor guy that was drowning, but for me. Stoops ended up briefly doing guard duty on Ellis Island before going home to Chicago after the war ended when the atomic bombs were dropped on Japan. He was finally reunited with his wife, Marilyn. After the war, Stoops settled down in Indiana and got involved in the jewelry business. He eventually moved to Attleboro to further his career. Stoops had five children, the fourth of whom is Bob Stoops, Jr. Stoops is a parishioner of St. Mary in Westfield where he and his wife, Vicki, are coordinators of the Take and Eat ministry program and CCD teachers. Bob said growing up, his father never talked much about the war. But returning to Normandy a few years back as part of a family reunion helped release some demons from the war. I think that helped us as a family, but also helped him, I think, to kind of maybe relive some of that a little bit and feel a little more open talking about it because he was able to talk to other veterans over there, and which is, they share their stories, you know can't share with us, then you share with each other. At Normandy, Stoops received a citation for being a veteran of the Normandy invasion. Recently, Stoops discovered a newfound ministry, crafting jewelry into religious faith emblems. It's something he's passionate about. I find it to be a gift for me, a gift to have at my age that gives me something to do, and it gives me something that I like to do. Part two of Bob Stoops' story, which will air on an upcoming edition of this show, will feature the creation of his religious emblems. For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic. And we certainly thank Bob Stoops for his service. And this weekend, we also pause to remember all who have served our country. It's important to not forget the true meaning behind Memorial Day.